there, I'm Carla Davis, and welcome to the best of GameTap 2007. GameTap brought the awesome, as the kids say, in 07, adding hundreds and like hundreds of amazing games. So we asked our staff to kindly identify their 10 favorites from 07, and now I'm here to bring you the results. Our countdown begins with one of the most adrenaline pumping games on the list. Number 10, Clive Barker's Jericho. The story behind Clive Barker's Jericho is you are this group of mystic soldiers that are trying to save the world. There's someone in there with him. I can feel it. I don't know what happened. I think I'm in him. When God was first creating the world, the first living creature that was created was the firstborn, which was a very powerful being. And God realized that that's not something that he really wanted, but being his first creation did not destroy it. Simply locked it away, and every time that the firstborn is almost released, he would inevitably destroy the world. We've come for the firstborn! Of course you have. So did everyone. All the characters are completely distinct. I think I owe you one. The game uses the different abilities of each character really well, because you'll come across obstacles where only one character can get through it. The visuals are very dark and kind of gruesome and disturbing. And a lot of death, a lot of destruction, something that you would picture in a Clive Barker type of scene. What do you think they do with you when there's no one left to burn? If you're into dark visual, gruesome type of games such as Doom and anything like that, you would definitely enjoy playing Jerrica. Number nine, Garou, Mark of the Wolves. Garou, Mark of the Wolves is basically the final game in the series of Fatal Fury. It's the closing game to what was a great series. Round one, fight! It actually is one of the better game fighting games ever made. It kind of came at the tail end of the fighting game craze. So it still has some so, sort of the old school mentality of fighting games at the time. It's really just a very polished, perfect fighting game. KO! It stands out from the rest of the Fatal Fury games because it had a lot more technical gameplay to it, a lot different moves to help you out, and a lot of different ways that you can set up your actual gameplay. And as far as uh, graphics wise, it was definitely the best in the Fatal Fury series. I don't think many had played it there during the original release uh, in the arcades. And it's just yet another time where you can experience it for the first time here in GameTap. Number eight, Overlord. In Overlord, you play as the Overlord, Quaking with fear. whose minions are trying to help you regain all of the pieces of your once mighty empire. Your minions will attack for you, your minions will bring treasure back to you, uh, your minions will even get you a girlfriend if you so desire. I think Overlord's really neat just because, you know, it's not the only game you've ever been able to play a bad guy, but it's one of the few. And it's a really, really, really funny experience. <laughs> My favorite part of the game is the minions' responses to you when they come up and go, Treasure, my lord, for you. You really can get into telling these little guys what to do, and quite frankly, you don't care if they live or die. In fact, you sacrifice them quite a bit. And sometimes I sacrifice a lot of them for fun. Do you want to do like the really bad thing to people or the sort of bad thing to people? And, and you're going to want to get your way, but are you going to want to trick people to do it? Or are you just going to take it by force? If you're not playing Overlord, you're pretty much missing out on a good time. So what are you doing? Go play Overlord. Number seven, Metal Slug X. It's, it's probably the wackiest of the Metal Slug series. They released uh, Metal Slug 2, and it was good, but it wasn't quite all there. So rather than move on to the sequel, they actually just went back and redid the whole thing. You play as one of four characters in the game that are basically part of special forces even trying to take back the government from terrorists. So it's a run and gun shooter game, side scrolling. My favorite weapon in Metal Slug X would have to be the rocket launcher. Not necessarily because it's really powerful and great, but because when you get it, the game sounds like a screaming rocket launcher at you. Rocket launcher. 
if you eat a certain amount of food in the game, you suddenly become this big, overweight person that gets uh, even bigger guns and do a lot more damage. It's just little funny things like that that make the game really great. Metal Slug X, uh, and really the entire Metal Slug series, kind of redefined the way we think of run and jump games. Not really because of the mechanics, but just because of how much can be happening at the screen at any time, or, or you know, the, the lack of logic <laughs> that just encompasses every screen of the game. It's just wacky, it's bizarre, it's fantastic, I love it. Shock and awesome! Who doesn't love Metal Slug? <sighs> Next up are some games that require both strategy and brain-straining puzzle skills, and we start with one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. Number six, XCOM UFO Defense. Well, the objective in, in XCOM uh, UFO Defense is to basically fend off a bunch of aliens. Nowadays, that basically means you know going after them with a rifle. But in XCOM, it really involved you manning every single aspect, from the economy to the geography to you know how you strategize technology. We could not put that on the list uh, for the best games released on GameTap in 2007. I mean, it's not one of our best games. It is literally one of the best games ever made. In fact. IGN.com recently called it the best PC game of all time. XCOM wasn't really meant to be scary, but it was really freaking scary. The atmosphere of the game is very uh, dark and terrifying. The music is very creepy and eerie, and it plays the whole time. Every time one of your guys died or something like that, you didn't just lose the guy, you lost like all the guns and the armor that your company had spent all this money to outfit him with. I remember every time going out there with XCOM, like, really, really worried and wanting to, to make sure that, you know, my team made it back alive. If you're a strategy gamer, you need to go play this game. Uh, it's one of a kind. You won't play anything like it. I'm still waiting for a game to, to get the formula just right, as Microsoft Pros did it back in the 90s. Number five, Tomb Raider Anniversary. Tomb Raider fans will love this game because it harkens back to the original so much that you can be playing this game and walk around a corner and go, hey, wait a minute, I, I recognize this area. There's, there's a power up around the corner, I, I know it. And they, they were very true to the, to the original game. I would say the best update from the game is honestly the gameplay. There are things that you simply just could not do in 1996. And now you're a, a slick character that can grab ledges and can, and can jump and can slither. There's just a lot of things that you couldn't do before that maybe you wanted to do. I think the shooting mechanic in Tomb Raider is also vastly improved, as well as I think some of the new versions of the puzzles are really, really cool now that Laura is much, much more flexible. Tomb Raider Anniversary really brings the awesome story and design of the original Tomb Raider into this generation. Number four, Mist Online Uru Live. Mist Online Uru Live is a MMO, a massive multiplayer online game. What makes that different from the other Mist series like Mist and Ribbon is that you have the ability to work with characters who are real players behind their computer playing with you. Originally when Cyan created the game, uh, it went through extensive beta testing and they were never able to actually release the online portion of the game. We were never able to see the online portion of the game until Cyan brought Uru to us. So we helped develop it with them. Anyone that's played the past games knows that the puzzles are quite difficult, so having the help of someone else with you uh, does make it much easier to uh, play and much more enjoyable too. The previous Myst games were uh, generally pre-rendered. They were sort of, you know, they were very flat and still, but then this one is fully fleshed out, it's exquisitely beautiful 3D worlds that you get to walk through. So it's a rich mental experience. I mean, it's like uncovering a new civilization every time you play. Number three, Sam and Max, Abe Lincoln must die. Sam and Max is a freelance police duo. Uh, Sam is a dog. Max is a hyperkinetic rabbity thing and uh, they are cops for hire, essentially. Not, not sanctioned by anybody officially, they just do it for the pay. In Abe Lincoln Must Die, uh, Max has to run for president against the Abe Lincoln Memorial. I 
I have a dream, America. It starts out where I'm in an all-nude production of Death of a Salesman on Ice. At the very beginning of the game, uh, they pull up to the White House and Sam looks around and says, Well, here we are, standing in an open field west of the White House. Like, and that's just drive the nerds crazy. That's straight from Zork. If you get it, it's really fantastic. Now that's crazy talk. I'm impressed. One of the absolute highlights is the moment when the statue of Abraham Lincoln animates itself and starts walking down the street in a destructive path like throughout the city. I will make you all my hypnotic slaves. <laughs> I mean, it's like a modern Godzilla. It's one of the funniest moments I'd seen in a modern video game. It's, you know, three to five hours of pure hilarity. Number two, Sid Meier's Civilization IV. In Civilization IV, the object is to create a civilization, a culture, um, that is superior in at least one way to all the other cultures in the game. You can build up your empire, and it's very logical in how you do this. You can't start with warships. You have to start from the ground up. Basically, you're trying to take over the world, but one of the really cool things about Civ is that, you know, you can do it through a lot of different ways, whether you get elected as a president of the UN or the first person in space. Civilization IV is so addictive because you want to get to the next level. You want to see how far you can go. You want to see who's going to make alliances and who's going to make war against you next. Sid Meier is really the king of the, the one more turn syndrome. Uh, every turn is, is very quick to play and can alter the, the course of history. And you know, any, any turn can, can be a game breaking turn. And really when you, when you press end turn, the game updates so quickly and you're on your next turn that it's hard to pick any good stopping point. So it's a very addictive game. You don't have to really know a lot about strategy games in order to sort of get the idea of what you're supposed to do in Civ and then really get pulled in and, and addicted pretty quickly. And so I think it's a, um, I think it's a, a really one of those types of games for everybody. And now the moment you've been waiting for. It's our staff's favorite game that we added to the service in 2007. Here's a hint. It's a little naughty. Number one, Psychonauts. In Psychonauts, you play as Rasputin, who is a young up-and-coming psychic who has infiltrated a camp of psychics, which is basically to train psychic cadets to become Psychonauts. This is your last chance to chicken out. Oh, me, sir. I'd like to chicken out, please. So your objective is to go through the minds of the other characters in the game to figure out who is who's stealing the brains and what's going on with kids. So he's really kidnapping children and stealing their brains to make weapons. Yes! Isn't that great? You, you go into a character's mind and it's completely different from anything else you've seen in the game. The design is different, the colors are different, your costumes, the music. This is different for every single character that you go through. Rasputin, it's time to earn your merit badge. Psychonauts was uh, written and designed by Tim Schafer, who is commonly believed to be the funniest man in video games, and so the dialogue is very snappy and witty and clever. A deranged man-man is building an army of psychic death tanks to take over the world, and there's no one who can stop him, except for you and me. Oh my god! Let's make out! Uh, what? One very memorable spot in the game where the character enters into the brain of a lungfish, and it's this whole metropolitan city of all lungfish, and then you hear this rumble. And then the character of Rasputin, who is almost as tall as the skyscraper, Godzilla-sized, comes walking around the corner and just goes like... I was about to stop playing, because I had been playing for a couple of hours that day. And then I saw that cutscene, and I was like, well, now I can't stop playing because I'm Godzilla, and I'm going to destroy Lungfishopolis. Your days of terrorizing the theater as the Phantom are over. Maybe as the Phantom, but he's nothing compared to the full destructive force of an angry critic. <laughs> um, critics all around just loved the game, adored the game, but for some reason, not many people played it during the original release. It's the best game that no one's ever played. <laughs> but people are playing it now, so it's good. It's better. That is why I am here, chained in more ways than you can see. A prisoner of art. A prisoner of art. Well, uh, I'm gonna go downstairs. You good? I'm good. Well, that is our list, and we're sticking to it.
10 great games that will keep you playing through 2007 and beyond. Got a favorite that didn't make the list? Go to the talk section on GameTap.com to chime in on our forums and tell us what all you've been playing. Or hey, even post your own top 10 list. Huh? Thanks for joining us for the Best of GameTap 2007. I'm Carla Davis and I'm out.